In this video, we're going to look at the cosine law. So the cosine law is used if I want to solve for either a side or an angle in a triangle, if one of two cases exists. If I have three given sides, or if I have what are called two sides and a contained angle, I can use the cosine law in order to solve for a missing side length or a missing measure of an angle. So how this works is, if I have a triangle, we're going to label our angles with capital letters. So I have this triangle ABC, and the letters A, B, and C are capital letters to indicate the measure of the actual angle in that triangle. And we use the opposite side with lowercase letters to indicate the side lengths. So across from angle A is side A, and I'm going to use a lowercase a to measure the side length. So, in this triangle, if I'm given, for example, two sides, A and C, the contained angle is going to be the angle that's between sides A and C. So that would be angle B. That's called our contained angle. So the same thing would be true if I was looking at A and side B. The contained angle would be angle C. Or if I had the length of side B and side C, the contained angle would be angle A. Okay, so let's look at what the actual cosine law has. If I look at the same triangle, triangle ABC, we see that I want to solve for a missing side length. So cosine law works very similarly to Pythagorean theorem. However, it's used for any type of triangles, not necessarily just right angle triangles. So the cosine law tells me that A squared is equal to B squared plus C squared. So that first portion looks like our Pythagorean theorem. But because we can use it for any type of triangle, I also have a little bit extra, which is minus 2BC and the cosine of angle A. If angle A is in fact a 90 degree triangle, and I put in 90 degrees for the cosine of A, we notice that the cosine of A is, ac or cosine of 90, is actually zero. So that part at the end of the cosine law would disappear in a 90 degree triangle. So if I look at the cosine law, I can write this for any of the three sides. So we've written one for, if I was solving for side A, so that means I would be given the two sides, B and C, and the contained angle between them, which is angle A. But I could also write this for side B, and I could write it in the exact same way, where I have B squared equals two sides, A squared plus C squared, minus 2AC, times the cosine of that contained angle, which is angle B. So you could do the same thing again to write a cosine law to solve for, angle, for side C. So if you'd like to try that, you can go ahead. You should end up with that C squared is going to be A squared plus B squared minus 2AB cosine of C. So you'll notice I put a star on the end. If you'd like to pause the video now, you can copy this slide down. However, I'm going to come back to it. So we said the cosine law is also used if I'm given three sides and I want to solve for an angle. So if I look at this formula, the part where it has the angle is that cosine of A part. So that's the part I want to isolate. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to take the negative 2BC cosine of A. Because it's negative, I want to bring it to the left-hand side of the formula. And then I'm going to bring the A squared onto the right-hand side. So if I switch sides, I have to also switch the signs of those terms. So I'd be left with 2BC cosine of A, which becomes positive, is equal to B squared plus C squared minus A squared, which is the opposite side of that contained angle. Right? So that's going to be the negative. If I want to isolate cosine of A, that means that now what I have to do is I have to divide both sides by 2BC. And that will leave me with a new formula. The cosine of A is equal to B squared plus C squared minus the opposite side, which is A squared, divided by the other two sides, 2BC. Okay? So going back to our previous slide, that means that we now have a formula to solve for missing angle. And we can, again, just like with the sides, we can write a similar formula for cosine of B or cosine of C using the same type of pattern. Okay, so what we want to do next is we're going to look at an example. If I give this triangle, triangle ABC, what I want to do is I want to determine the length of side B. So if you look at the triangle, you'll notice that I have two sides and that contained angle between them. And I'm missing the opposite side across from the contained angle. So that one is side B. You'll notice it's also across from angle B. And that's the one we're going to look for. Okay, so going back to our formulas we had, 
previously in our last slide, we looked at different versions of the cosine law. So what I want to do is I want to write the cosine law for side B, which is B squared equals A squared plus C squared minus 2AC cosine of B. And then I'm going to label my sides in my triangle. So across from angle C is side C, across from angle A is side A. And we're going to just substitute into the formula. So I have a measure of length for side A as well as side C and in angle B which is 60 degrees. So I'm going to put that into my formula and then I'm going to calculate. So 8 squared, that's going to give me 64 squared. 5.1 squared is 26.01, so I'm going to leave it unrounded. And then you'll notice that 2 times 8 times 5.1 is multiplied by the cosine of 60. So I can multiply those numbers together, but I can't subtract them because we still have to do order of operations. I'm still going to have to multiply that by cosine of 60 before I can do adding or subtracting. So I'm going to do that first. We're going to put this whole thing into our calculator. You'll notice that b squared is not, uh, is not the same as side b. So we remember that the opposite of squaring something is going to be square rooting. So I'm going to take everything that we have in our equation. I have 64 plus 26 0.01 minus 81.6 and we're going to multiply by cosine of 60. So if I put that into the calculator, what we're going to do is we're going to then square root it and I'll end up with b equals 7 meters. Okay, in our last example what we're going to do is now we're going to solve for a missing angle. So a missing angle means that I'm given three side lengths. So just like before, I'm going to look for the measure of angle P. So I'm going to label the sides. We'll notice that the opposite angle is going to give me the same letter for the opposite sides. And this one I've changed it to triangle PQR instead of ABC. So if I label the sides, I still have sides P, sides Q, and side R. That's across from those missing angles. And I'm going to write the cosine law for angle P. So again, that's Q squared plus R squared. I'm going to subtract the opposite side, which is P squared, and divided by the two sides that are on either side of my contained angle, which is Q and R. Okay. Again, just like before, we're going to substitute in our numbers, our values for the variables. So Q being 32, R being 26, and P being 55. We can substitute those values in. And here, again, we want to calculate exact values. So I'm going to calculate everything in the numerator as well as everything in the denominator but I'm going to leave it as a fraction. And to calculate the angle, we're going to look at our inverse function. So remember that the inverse function, not the same as a reciprocal, which we would have already talked about, but the inverse is the cos inverse, and I'm going to take the exact fraction the way we see it. So if we put it into our calculator, you should get that angle P is equal to 43 degrees.